So as I said, what I'll be talking about is, is ultrasound, but I'll talk about radio frequency without having the images as well. So two systems available in the United States. There's the, the ultrasound renal denervation system by Recore, and then radio frequency by Medtronic. Um, they work in different ways. The ultrasound-based system is a circumferential heating with a cooling balloon centrally to protect the lumen from injury. Um, so one of the challenges of circumferential heating is if you simply just heat circumferentially around the renal artery, you can cause stenosis, and that's something you don't want to do. So this system employs a cooling balloon. The Medtronic system actually aims to not do truly circumferential, but they space out the burns in a helical pattern. And both technologies aim to heat up the tissue to then ablate the nerves and then decrease signaling. Um, one of the reasons it's important to understand where the nerves are is because that will change your mechanism of action and effect. So when we were first doing the initial Medtronic studies, we were told that the ganglia were associated with the aorta, and therefore, if we really did not miss the ostium, that was the most important thing. And we didn't really want to go very distal. The reason for that is we didn't understand the anatomy. In fact, at that time, the anatomical location of the nerves was proprietary information only had by the company. So as a result, we aimed here and didn't aim so much here. But in this schematic, what you can observe is that, yes, there are ganglia here, but the distance between the artery and the ganglia is much greater at the ostium. And that's the reason why if you have a catheter technology that doesn't ablate to a big depth, you actually need to go more distally in order to affect a greater denervation procedure by hitting more nerves. If you go circumferentially and you're more deep, then you can still get the nerves, but you do have to go a little bit more deep. And that's what the difference between the technologies is. With Medtronic, you have a slightly shallower ablation pattern, and that's why you typically need to go distal and into the branches. With Recore and other ultrasound-based technologies, it's a deeper burn, um, and it can go circumferentially as long as there's cooling of the lumen. But you then also have to be careful that you're not near the renal parenchyma, and I'll show you a schematic of that in a second. The other attribute that's important is that if you really are going to decrease blood pressure, you need to denervate a certain sufficient number of nerves in order to get that effect. Um, we know that there are many systems that the body has to lower and elevate blood pressure. And if you're only acting in the sympathetic nervous system, if you only ablate a few nerves, the body is going to have compensatory mechanisms to clearly overcome that effect. And that's why you really need to get a certain proportion of nerves down. And then Juan Granada is speaking next door, but he had led these studies to look and see how many nerves you needed to ablate in order to get a decrease in norepinephrine and therefore a decrease in blood pressure. And typically you need to get at least 50% or more, but in general it's going to be the 60 to 80% range. And that's why it's important to do a more complete ablation. That's why technologies have evolved. And with Medtronic, you see that there are more and more ablations being used in the spiral program compared with the initial flex program. And with Recore, that's why you have circumferential ablations uh, near the ostium. So as far as the catheter technologies themselves, this is just the picture of the Recore. They generally are a balloon-based catheter or a non-balloon-based catheter connected to a generator, so an energy source. If you're going to do ethanol ablation, then it don't, you don't need a generator or energy source. You're doing denaturation with ethanol, so that those catheters don't have a separate energy source. In the case of Recore, this is centered within the artery with a balloon. There's cooling that's then placed through it. This is the generator, and both generators are, have the ability to adjust the amount of energy delivered based upon either sensing in the case of radio frequency or in the case of Recore based upon the size of the balloon. And so the idea here is the generator does everything it needs to do. It's somewhat automatic. With Medtronic, you can select which electrodes you want to apply or not. With Recore, it's just one central thing, and so you don't need to do that at all. The difference also comes in terms of catheters. So with Medtronic, you just have a single catheter, goes in six French, and based upon the size of the artery, the helix either gets bigger or smaller. With Recore, because it's balloon-based, you have to size accordingly. And these are the different sizes of the balloons uh, on the right. On the left side are the artery sizes. And so you typically will size it either by QVA or IVIS, and then based upon that, apply the technology. So therefore, there's an advantage to Medtronic in the sense that you only need one catheter, whereas Recore, you might need multiple ones based upon the size of the arteries. But there's also an advantage the other way in the sense that Medtronic, you have to do a lot more ablations and the ablations are longer, whereas Recore, they're shorter ablations and you're only going in the central system. Either way, what you're doing is targeting 
all these nerves at a depth typically one to six millimeters um, uh, away from the lumen. And so the idea here is if you can do it as circumferentially or helically as possible, you will get the most nerves and therefore decrease the amount of signaling of the sympathetic system. Please note that in, in what you want to do is preserve the lumen as well so that you don't get a stenosis, particularly if you're doing it circumferentially. So this is just an example in a thermal model of what you see with an ablation. This is the record device. You see things similarly with the Medtronic device, although it won't be in a circle. It'll be in a helix. So these are two ablations, about 10 to 15 millimeters apart. In cross-section, this is the axial view. As this is heated up, you'll see the tissue that gets heated. Um, that central area is protected by that balloon, in this case, a cooling balloon that occurs. With Medtronic, you won't see a central preserve preserved area, but you'll see a more of a wedge-shaped type of ablation pattern, and that will be spread in a helical way down the axis of the artery itself. So here are just treatment strategies for a variety of uh, renal uh, 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 designs. And what you can see is, in general, the emissions are going to vary based upon which device you use. So in this case, with the Medtronic device, you would probably do an ablation or two within the accessory that's here, or this branch here, and then you typically would go into this branch and this branch as well. With Recore, because it's more de depth of, of uh, actually ablation, you don't actually need to go distally, and if you went distally, you, there's a risk you could injure the parenchyma. So in general, you stay more proximal with that system. This is a case of an accessory renal artery. Typically, you'll do an ablation in the accessory, ablations in the main with Recore. If it's Medtronic, you do main as well as these accessories. And although in this case, because they're less than three millimeters, you wouldn't actually be able to do it. So that's one, one challenge of that system. How do we set these cases up? In the trials, especially the Recore trials, we did CTs in advance. I actually think CTAs are very, very helpful. You heard uh, Professor Rahm talk about how it can be used for screening. And I think oftentimes it's good to identify if there are accessory branches before you go in and do it in the cath lab. The reason I say that is because otherwise you have to do good abdominal aortography and do selective engagement typically of all these branches. If you have the CT in advance, in this case you can see two single solitary renals, there's enough of an ablation zone, you can plan your whole procedure and it becomes much more efficient to do in that way. This is just a zoomed version of how it would be. You can even say, I'm going to plan on ablating here, 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 here with Recore. I may go into here with Medtronic. And then you kind of know how long the procedure is going to take before you go in. Because these are not five-minute procedures. Um, in the case of Medtronic, the procedure can be over an hour. And in a busy cath lab that you're doing all different types of cases, especially for a case like this where there's a lot of sedation involved, it's good to know how much time it's going to be. So this is just an example, um, ultrasound guided access. Remember in the trials, very, very low rates of adverse events. You wanna keep that very low. So this is one of my colleagues with micropuncture and ultrasound based access. He's inserting the wire, he hasn't fluoroed yet. He's now gonna drive the table up north. And what you're gonna see in a very experienced colleague is in a second when he fluoros, you'll see where the micropuncture with ultrasound has accessed the artery. It's too high. These systems are six and seven French and, and, and above. So you see immediately after doing that, he removes it, holds pressure, and then will reaccess the artery in the common femoral at a much better location. As far as technique, you do good renal angiography and do selective angiography as he's showing here. In this case, you'll do some angulation to see what's going on. And then this is the renal angiogram demonstrating it where you can do these ablation patterns. Um, in the case of the recourse system, what you would do is stick in the main you, you, the balloon self-inflates at a very low pressure. You confirm that there's no, um, there's no flow after the balloon. There you see it's occlusive, and then you do your ablation. The occlusion is only seven seconds, so it's a very short period of time. It's not going to cause ischemia. The ablation is applied. One of the advantages of this system is typically it starts uh, painting the patient at about three seconds in. So because it's a second seven, seven second ablation, they start feeling it, and you say, you're going to feel this for another four, three, two, one, off. And patients can actually tolerate that. So most of our patients, almost all of our patients, had conscious sedation, not general anesthesia. The challenge with other systems like Medtronic, which are longer ablation patterns and more ablations, is you really have to heavily sedate the patients because they will definitely feel it. And when they feel it, if they breathe, you can get some movement. And with the original flex catheter, that was a problem. You could lose contact. With spiral, because it's sort of around the artery itself, you tend to not have that issue. 
Um, so this is just an example of it. Now I'll show you a couple other cases. This is another example of why the CT was really useful. You see here there's actually two renals and two accessories. In fact, there's four total arteries here supplying the kidney. I'm gonna let it run through again. And without the CT, you would have had to do an aortogram and then do selective engagement of all of these. But in order to do it, you do actually have to do selective engagement. So here's renal artery one, here's renal artery two. What's the clue that there's an accessory? Well, you can see on the nephrogram when you get the blush that the blush is not complete in the whole kidney bean of the kidney. You see there are areas of missingness down here, for instance, which is supplied by this. That's a clue that you're missing an accessory. Turns out that both these accessories are above three millimeters, so they can be treated. And then this is the right renal, similar situation. The nephrograms are incomplete, but there's two renal arteries on both sides. So in this case, we actually had to do four ablations. And what we did is we sized it, and then this is just an example of how there's, uh, th this ablation is done. There's no flow here, that's what we want. We do ablations in this, two, mil two with a four millimeter balloon. Then we go to the other artery, and typically you, what you'll do is you'll pull the catheter back in, engage with a guide, or, and then go up with the wire, and then put the catheter back in again. So that's the second ablation there. This is on the right side, one, several uh, several ablations there in the first and then several ablations in the second with angiograms showing that there's no issues. What you typically will see is you may see some spasm in the vessel, it typically resolved with nitro. The studies have shown these procedures to be remarkably safe, very, very low rates of adverse events such as dissection, perforation, et cetera. But we know that in the studies, even with operators that weren't that experienced, these are carefully conducted studies. In the real world practice, anything can happen. And so I feel strongly that you need to know how to deal with perforations, you need to know how to deal with complications, stenting, et cetera, in order to make these procedures truly safe. This was a procedure that took an hour and a half because there were four separate uh, ablations to be seen. I'll just show you one more case. Hopefully this is not your first case. This is a patient that had, uh, you can see the spinal uh, rods that are there and a very, very, very inferiorly oriented takeoff with some calcium, although the vessels themselves are not very calcified. This could not be wired with a single wire. Um, the, the entire guide would be kicked out. So with a buddy wire in place, try it again, still couldn't be wired. And so then basically I used you know, coronary type techniques. It's a microcatheter down there. You can see how the microcatheter is coming back as the more supportive wire is put in. Once the wire is put in, I was skeptical that a balloon-based device is gonna be able to deliver around the curve. I was surprised though to see that after, um, uh, this is the angiogram showing where the ablation zones could be. This is calcium up here, so we're gonna stay away from that. In general, you don't wanna ablate where there's calcium because you can cause accelerated atherosclerosis at those points, but there's clearly other areas to do it. And this was actually an IVUS catheter that tracked and then this is the recore device, the balloon-based catheter tracking around. And you can see the guide is actually not kicking out a whole lot, um, but that's because I have a supportive wire down. So with that in place, we did our ablations and then post ablations, that's what's seen here. On the opposite side, same situation, very tortuous bend here, did the same sort of technique. And then actually this was able to deliver through that tortuosity and then effectively get ablations that way. So summary for renal denervation, and I'll make it both ultrasound as well as radio frequency. In general, there's seven French femoral procedures with conscious sedation, but you're gonna be very generous. This is not your typical cath-based sedation. I call it, this is more colonoscopy-based sedation, so higher doses up front so you don't get behind. Um, with, the, uh, with the RF system, it can be seven French um, uh, because it doesn't require that balloon. Um, typically, this is a standard over-the-wire uh, balloon-based catheter system for both. Um, with the spiral system, you just pull the wire back, and then the helix forms, and then you push the wire forward, and then, the, and then it straightens out again. With Recore, it's a standard balloon-based system. Both systems treat vessels three to eight millimeters. If you're below that, you're typically not going to be treated. If you're above it, you can't really treat it. And in the sake of Recore, it's balloon size to the vessel, and you may need more than one balloon to do it. With Medtronic, you don't need more than one catheter, but there are a lot more ablations, and the ablations are longer. In both cases, their external generator affects the energy transfer, either radio frequency with Medtronic, with Recore, it's ultrasound based with a cooling lumen as well, and the ablation times are going to vary based upon the device, which is important. 
And then finally, it's good safe practice with arterial access. Both systems are femoral. Both systems are being investigated for radial use now with changes to the catheter design. That will be a welcome change, especially because for many patients, it's easier to get to the renals if you're coming from above as opposed to coming from below. Typical conventional arterial closure, patients go home the same day. You don't get a blood pressure effect immediately. It typically takes at least a month or even longer to get some blood pressure effect. And then remember um, that the data really shows that one out of three patients will not have a response. So the responder rate is typically two thirds. That means that if you take three patients coming to see you, one of the three is not going to have a response at all. And that's why I think it's really important to be honest with your patients about what they can expect. It's also why it's important to do all the secondary workup up front, try lifestyle, try, try med medication, and if those things fail, you can tell the patient, well, we have this other technology that might work, but I really wanna make sure you try these other things because I don't wanna put you through a procedure that has a one in three chance of not working. And if you're honest like that, then I think you set the expectations properly. On the other hand, if you try to tell everybody, I'm gonna cure your hypertension and you're gonna come off your medications, you're immediately gonna lose your patience and be disillusioned with the procedure because it certainly doesn't work that way. The final point I'll make with respect to medications is within the trials, most patients, if their blood pressure got controlled, remained on the exact regimen that they were on beforehand, but they went from poor control to control. If their blood pressure was, was controlled at baseline or just minimally elevated, those are the patients in whom you might be able to reduce medication burden. But in general, this works as well as about one antihypertensive medication. So if somebody's on four meds, they're not gonna go down to one med with a controlled blood pressure. They're probably gonna get better control, so less risk of events, and they'll probably be on three or more medications. So those are also important expectations to set before you do these procedures. So with that, happy to take any questions, and uh, sorry we didn't have pictures of the RF system, but um, uh, they're also all ubiquitously available online as well.